Welcome to DVC Weekly, episode four. My name is Jason Erpelding. I'm the broker of Buy and Sell DVC, and this is Scott Ferrioli. I'm the owner of Buy and Sell DVC and also of dvc-rental.com. And if you're looking to, just want to mention real quick, if you're looking to rent points, DVC points, or rent out your points, you want to visit dvc-rental.com, or their phone number is... 407-494-2320. And if you're looking to possibly sell some Disney Vacation Club points or you're looking at possibly buying, you want to visit buyandselldvc.com and the phone number is... 407-906-3789. And we also have a nice chat feature on the website as well. Indeed. And uh, today we're going to go into talking about the boardwalk. And uh, it just so happened that I believe Scott was in the area last night, so he can uh, give us some inside information on what's happening uh, in relation to the boardwalk and what, what's open, what's not open. Uh, but just, just to start out with the boardwalk, the boardwalk is a resort that does expire 2042. The annual dues for 2021 are $7.81 per point. So... That means if you own 100 points, your dues are going to be uh, $781. Now, the boardwalk offers studios, one bedrooms, two bedrooms, and grand villas. Yep. Uh, do you know off the top of your head how many grand villas there are? I don't know offhand, to be honest. It's a handful. I think it's sure. seven. Six, maybe it's like six or seven, so it's probably right around there. So uh, so if you want a grand villa, you know they're, they're few and far between, but of course they require a lot of points. Now, the boardwalk location is near Epcot. And near Hollywood Studios. And that's probably, you know, the number one reason that people love the boardwalk. Of course, the boardwalk's also associated with Beach Club because they're in the same area. Um, so if you're a big food and wine person, a lot of times you're going to stay at the boardwalk oh, yeah. because of its location. Um, and really the boardwalk, and as far as the resale prices on the boardwalk, it's... The boardwalk is still pretty popular as far as prices. It's just typically a step below Beach Club. If Beach Club is selling for between this and this, boardwalk is usually selling, you know, five to ten dollars per point less than the Beach Club because there are a few more villas at the boardwalk than at the Beach Club, so it can be easier to get in there. Um, we'll just go into Scott because he was in the area last night, so we'll let him uh, tell you a little bit more about the boardwalk area. Sure. I, I was actually staying at Beach Club last night, which again, as Jason mentioned, is right on the boardwalk. So you, you, you've got Crescent Lake there, and they've got a big boardwalk that goes around it. You've got a Beach Club and Boardwalk. And one of my favorite things about Boardwalk is that there are a ton of options of stuff to do there. You, typically, again, right now we're in a bit of a pandemic, so some of the stuff is closed, Like, but there's normally entertainers on the boardwalk. And there's a bunch of restaurants, like cur currently Trattoria Al Forno, the Abracadabra, the Pizza Shop, and Boardwalk Bakery are all open to get food at right now. But you've still got ESPN Zone, Big River Grill, Flying Fish, um, all still closed, plus the Atlantic Dance Hall, and, um, oh, my gosh, it's Jelly Rolls, Jelly Rolls, all currently closed at the moment. But again, they will be opening sometime soon. Because at the, at the moment, the DVC rooms at Boardwalk are currently open, but the in-rooms, which are the regular rooms that are not DVC, are currently inaccessible to members, to anybody. They've kept those closed for the time being. Not really sure why, but they really need to open up some more because we were there again last night, and it was busy around the Boardwalk area. So a lot of fun, fantastic location. Walking to both um, Epcot and Hollywood Studios, or you could take the boat. It's also now because the new Skyliner right by Epcot, you have easy access to the Skyliner as well. So Boardwalk's a fantastic place to stay. Absolutely. It's my overall favorite resort. So you really can't go wrong with Boardwalk. And again, speaking in normal times, I mean, the Boardwalk is a great place because you can go down, you can go to Jelly Rolls. It's, it's wonderful entertainment. Uh are they open till normally like 2 a.m.? Something like it, it, It's open late. A lot of the resorts, besides Disney Springs where you have access to – yeah, Saratoga Springs where you have access to Disney Springs where there's a lot of stuff to do. A lot of the other resorts after 8, 9 o'clock at night can be completely dead. Where Boardwalk, there's a lot of stuff going on. I didn't even mention they've got their own art gallery there. I mean there's a lot of stuff going on. So 
you know, if you're going back to your room and, you know, your kids are tired and they want to lay down or, you know, you just want something to do, you've got teenagers who want something to do and could be getting a little bored. It's got a really nice area there where you can go out and there's still stuff going on. Like I mean, that. There's, there's jugglers there. Oh, yeah, the, the magicians, entertainers are absolutely top notch. There's always a lot of fun stuff. My kids always get picked to be in the shows. So Boardwalk, again, absolutely great. Love Boardwalk. And you can, uh, you can rent a Surrey bike. Haven't, well, I haven't done that. I've, I've heard stories of people taking the Surrey bikes and trying to go up the hill and getting stuck. I had a buddy of mine who had to push their family on their Surrey bike to help them get up the hill. Yeah, I know that. Ty had that happen as well. <laughs> but yeah. And then another thing is, is when you're staying at the boardwalk, I just want to mention uh, Beaches and Cream. You can walk over to the boardwalk, or excuse me, Beaches and Cream from the boardwalk. And um, now I'm forgetting their famous dish, the kitchen sink. Yep. You can get the kitchen sink, or if you just want to get the outdoor window service, you can get the mini kitchen sink, uh, and that's another option. I mean, the, the boardwalk is a great place. If, let's just say you, your vacation, you don't have kids. I mean, you're going to love it because you have the entertainment at night. You can go to Jelly Rolls. You can walk to Epcot. You can go to Hollywood Studios. If you do have kids, there's going to be things there that keep them entertained. If you want to walk around the boardwalk and, you know, they're hanging out with you, they're going to stay entertained. And we should mention the the slide at the boardwalk. Oh, Beach Club. Oh, I mean, that's, 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 you're right. Yeah. We, we have to mention that because over the years, there's been a lot of talk about what the slide used to be. Now the slide has changed. I'll let Scott uh, tell you a little bit about that. So the slide's called the Keister Coaster. And previously, it used to come out of a clown's mouth because the whole thing's supposed to be old boardwalk, like New Jersey boardwalk themed. And it came out of a clown's mouth and it was nothing that really ever bothered me, but there were some people who just absolutely hate clowns and Disney finally got the word and they understood and they've changed everything. So now it's, they put up a facade around the slide that just, it's the, the old, it's the new slash old style Mickey and Minnie, you know, the, the, the new cartoon, like they've got the Mickey and Minnie's runaway railway, that like old looking cartoon style. They now have that up on the little facade around that. So no more scary clown anymore. Now it's just the it's it's Mickey and Minnie and Pluto and them just hanging out at the pool. So nothing not popping on any clowns' mouths anymore. And I do want to mention this, like my two boys are nine and eleven. They love going down the water slide. Every water slide's a little bit different as far as sometimes the steps are narrow or whatever. With the boardwalk slide, to me, there's no issue. Like it's the way it's laid out. You know, if you have a six-year-old and they want to go up the slide, they're just, they're not going to have any issues tripping or anything. And it's, it's super safe and they'll have a blast and they'll just keep going down the slide while you're, while you are relaxing by the pool. Yeah, I, I agree. And again, Boardwalk and Beach Club get compared a lot and, and Beach Club's typically known for having a better pool, but their slide's currently closed. And again, when you want to go on the Beach Club um, slide, your kids physically have to leave the property and go across a walkway to access the slide, which is something I really don't like, especially for younger kids. So it, it's nice that boardwalk, everything is much more self-contained and as you said, like easily accessible and steps are, are good for kids and stuff. So yeah, never had an issue. I've gone on the slide several times. It's a lot of fun. And then I'll just have Scott mention if you could, like, so let's say you're renting at the boardwalk. What What's it going to look like for your transportation to get to the to different parks if you if you don't want to use your car. Okay, yeah, again, great options because you're walking distance to both Epcot and Hollywood Studios or there are boats, which are, I think are the most underrated transportation at Disney property. I love taking the boats, but they'll take you to both resorts. If you want to go to Animal Kingdom or Magic Kingdom, you're going to have to take the buses. I mean, in theory, you could take the monorail over to Ep Epcot or Magic Kingdom because you can access the monorail when it's when it's running from Epcot. Right now, it's currently not. But you'd have to go through the International Gateway and then walk all the way through the park and out the front of Epcot to get to the monorail. So you never want you can do it, but you would never want to. Just take the bus for the other two the other two parks. And uh, now we're gonna move into the food of the week. Come here, I'm gonna eat you. Get in my belly. But for the food of the week, we got to do the Boardwalk Bakery last night, which is one of my favorites to do at Boardwalk. And uh, I have everything written down here. So the, they serve breakfast from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. And lunch and dinner is, is 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. So last night, we're gonna, I'm going to do two of them today. We got the key lime tart, which is $4.79. And we also had the Mickey brownie, which was supposed to be for my son, but he didn't really like it so much. So we ended up eating it. 
So the key lime tart was very good, sweet, sweet and tart, like a key lime pie is supposed to be. Uh, my wife, I, I think I might have enjoyed it a little more than my wife. She thought that the uh, key lime pies from Publix are actually better. And Publix does make a really great key lime pie. But we gave the key lime tart a 6.2 out of 10. Again, it's good. I'd possibly get it again, but I'm not going to be racing to get it again. And the Mickey brownie is a, it's a Mickey shaped brownie. It has more of like a dark chocolate. I don't want to say a shell, but a thicker dark, cho dark chocolate. I can't say it. Dark chocolate layer on top of it. And again, pretty good. I gave it a 5.9. I don't think I'd ever really get it again. Again, it's nothing bad. It's just those things that I've tried it and I know that there's better stuff. So I'll definitely do something else next time. But it was pretty good. Had some sprink, had little, uh, a little ball sprinkles on top. It was it was tasty, but again, nothing I'd really you know rush back to get to. Okay, perfect. Uh, now we're going to talk about the importance of u shear, and that typically pertains when it comes to uh, you decide you want to buy a DVC. A lot of times you're going to hear, "Well, what's the best u shear for me to buy?" If you're someone that travels all twelve months of the year, like you're just all over the place on when you travel, then the use share is not going to be a factor in your decision. But if you, let's say you live in Ohio, you're both teachers, you've you've rented from DVC dash rental the last five years, and you've come in March, you want to come in spring break, and that's what you want to keep doing, then the best use year for you to buy would be a March use year. And then you go backwards from there. So it's, February would be a good use year for you. December would be a good use year for you. You can even go back to October. You know, that would work for you. And what that has to do with is if you ever have to cancel that March reservation, you want to be sure that you still have time to use your points or bank your points. Just to give you the worst case scenario, let's say you vacation in March, but you buy an April use year. So now let's say something happens, you know, you know, some, someone in your family breaks their leg or something in February, minor injury, but you can't go on vacation and you cancel that reservation. You cancel it more than 31 days prior to checking in. Well, your points go back as regular points, but because you have an April use year, they now have to be used by April 1st of, of that year. So if you just cancel that March reservation, the chance of you using them by April is pretty much slim to none. Yeah, and you've missed your banking window as well, so you can't possibly bank them into the previous year. So so if you had the March use year, then now you have until, let's say it's March of 2022, you now have until March of 2023 to use your points, or you can still bank those points and you and give them another year. So that's where a use year comes into factor. You have eight, like if you own a December use year, you have eight months from the time you get your points to bank your points. So if you have a December use year, the banking deadline's the following July. And if you have a couple different months that you travel, you just want to figure out what use year is still going to fall under your banking window for when you travel. So if you, you know, if you vacation in uh, February and July, then you're going to want to stick with the February use year because that's still going to give you until the end of September to bank your points. It's going to cover the February trips and the July trips. And then just a couple things on use years. So there's there's eight different use years. Do you remember off the top of your head what use years don't exist? Or I could probably go through in my head and, and do them slowly one by one, but I think so, you have them memorized. So go so ahead. There's no, there's no January use year. There's no May use year. There's no July use year and there's no November use year. You know, for whatever reason. Now, of course, when Disney first began in 1991, you know, the internet and everything wasn't as prominent. So my theory is they created eight different use years because they didn't want everyone, they only had one use year. They didn't want everyone calling up at the same time to bank their points. Well, of course, now everybody just banks their points online. So there's really, you don't have to worry about you know, it's the last day. I'm going to be on the phone for whatever. You can just click a button, bank your points. And banking your points is a final transaction. So if you do move them, they have to be used in that uh, year. Now, when it comes to you share and renting out your points, 
I mean, it's really, you just want to give DVC dash yeah. rental your points as soon as possible. Exactly. The use share, there's no one use share that's more valuable than another. It's not, not like someone comes, like we're talking about the boardwalk right now, and they say, well, I have an October use share. Is that more valuable than a March use share? No, there's no one valuable more. There's no one use share more valuable than another. And when it, I don't know if you want to, anything you want to say on rental when it comes to use share. There's really not much because typically use share doesn't really affect much at all. It's just as long as you give us the points far far enough in advance, you know, we can rent them out. And Boardwalk's typically a, a really good renter. We happen. I'm not sure why I posted online the other day. We actually have a lot of Boardwalk points at the moment. And then typic, again, typically food and wine festivals, as you mentioned earlier, everybody's looking for Beach Club and Boardwalk. It's always the first ones to sell out. And there's still a decent amount of availability for the rest of the year. So, I mean, Boardwalk's a decent renter, but if you're looking to rent at Boardwalk, now's a great time to come in. We have a ton of points, and it's an absolutely wonderful resort. But yeah, use shares don't really affect too much. Another thing I do want to mention on use share is if you're already a member and then you're looking to buy another property, if you buy something with the same use share, everything is going to fall under the same membership number. It, you know, it's just... It's going to be super easy to use all your points together. You're going to have your main membership number. You're going to have one contract number and then another contract number. Can you own multiple use shares? Yes. Is it difficult to manage? It's really up to the individual. There's a lot of members that own multiple use shares. I do. I'm one of them. <laughs> so, and, and then like, so when you, and then when you log on, you still see all of your different memberships, yeah. yep. but they're just, you just have to go from, instead of having all the contracts under one membership, you just bounce around to the different memberships. Correct. And if you ever want to combine the points at, you know, if it's two different resorts at seven months, instead of it being under one membership, it's an extra step. You could transfer between your memberships and you can transfer as many times between your memberships as you want. So if I have Saratoga Springs and Boardwalk and I want to combine them at the seven month mark, a lot of times it's easier if I just transfer some of my, from, some of my points from one contract over to the other and then they could be just used together on one transaction. So it, it's it's not hard at all. It just it's a little bit easier if they're all together. But there are there are also advantages to having multiple use shares. Uh, as an example, like if you ever want to like um, purchase points directly from Disney, you can purchase up to twenty four points per year at nineteen dollars per point. And if you happen to have two different memberships, you could do that twice per year. And you also do if you want to transfer points out. You, Again, you could do as many as you want between memberships. But if you ever want to transfer points to somebody else, and now you've got double the amount of transfers, or if you want to transfer points in, you've got multiple times to do that. So there are some some benefits as well of having multiple membership numbers. And you just want to remember you have different banking yes windows yes. on that. You have to stay on top of it if you have multiple memberships. So when you so under in your case with the multiple membership numbers, does Disney do they send you a reminder on like on this membership your banking window is coming up? They're, they're, they're supposed to. I don't think they really send too, too many. Maybe they send an email. I, I haven't really seen them too often. But I mean, on, on your when you log into DVC member, you'll okay. get the little notifications on the dashboard that say, like, you, you know, your banking window is coming up. So they, they, they will let you know. But just those things that it's best to try, you know, put the reminder in your phone that you're approaching your banking window, which is always four months prior to your use year. But again, it, it can be managed. But it, it's, it's an extra step that you have to remember that, you know, you've got two different Member uh, use years, you have two different banking windows. So it can be done. Just stay on top of it. And then one other thing I will add is, unfortunately, the the use years are not created equal. Like we were talking about the boardwalk today, and I don't I don't have the stats in front of me, but there's a there's a pie chart out there that has you know the different percentages for the use year at the boardwalk. And so if you're looking for a certain use year and you say, well, I never see this one, well, maybe because only 10% exists, whereas another use year has, for whatever reason, 33% of the property was a February use year. Yep, absolutely. So uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed uh, episode four. We uh, discovered uh, we discussed the boardwalk. Yep. Got a nice uh, little food review this week from the boardwalk. Yep, from the boardwalk, as it was requested previously. Can we possibly do some reviews from where you're staying? So we, we definitely did that for this one. Boardwalk Bakery, good location. Check it out. And we appreciate you walk, watching, and uh, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, and come back for episode five. Yeah, check out episode one if you haven't already, because we have a giveaway for episode one, and we're getting close to hitting the number for the giveaway. So if you haven't, go to episode one and make sure you comment on episode one as well.
So thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.